Hey everybody and welcome to Northern Lion Plays Darkest Dungeon. This is a kind of hybrid roguelike dungeon crawler turn-based RPG that is coming to Steam Early Access on February 3rd. Currently available in a pre-release form for like YouTube and, and streaming. You're probably seeing people play this like crazy on Twitch and maybe some other YouTube series as well uh, as part of like the weekend of torment or whatever they've been calling it. But in any case, I played about an hour of Darkest Dungeon and it was like, oh... This is, it's still early, but there's something very special going on here. It's a very compelling game uh, that I wanted to take the opportunity to play because this is the kind of stuff that I love playing on the channel. You know, I I dabble in a lot of roguelite and roguelike-ish games that come out, and uh, this is one that I found kind of immediately compelling, so I wanted to get started here. Um, first try was my first try. This represents like 45 minutes of play before I was like, oh, I want to discover this stuff on camera. So I'm going to go back into this one. Um, which, admittedly, there is kind of an opening cutscene, but I had some trouble recording it with XSplit, so I'm just gonna have to, uh, skip that, and you'll just have to take my word for it that there's, uh, you know, some kind of trouble is afoot, some menace, if you will, and we'll get started, and I'll explain the mechanics as we go along here. There is gonna be some narration over top, by the way, I hope that you're able to hear it, but we're gonna start with the tutorial, and, uh, I'll explain what's happening at the same time that the game is explaining what's happening. Basically, like I mentioned, this is a game that is a, a hybrid... Dungeon crawler, turn-based RPG with roguelike-ish elements like permadeath and stuff like that. So we have a party system here. We have Reynol. He is our crusader. He's got some abilities. And we have Dismas. Might be like Dima. I'm not totally sure. But he's uh, our highwayman, which is kind of like a, a... I wouldn't necessarily call it a scout class. More like a rogue class, I guess, with a dagger and a pistol. Um, and it takes place in kind of like two different... Elements is maybe the way that I would describe it. One of these is like the the overall map at the bottom And what you do there is it's kind of like choosing a beacon in FTL You choose which room you want to move to and then the gameplay takes place on this screen up here uh, Which is called hallway movement and you just move forward with W A S and D basically and you uh, Encounter not random but like seated encounters as well as treasure and other kind of like FTL beacon style stuff So combat is turn-based as well, so we have nothing that's really going to be um Preventing us from having an opportunity to talk about things as we're going here. Another thing I want to point out, visual style, obviously just absolutely beautiful as well. At least in my personal taste. So, uh, I believe the characters have like an agility stat, or a, a speed stat here, yeah. So, uh, Dismas' speed is 6, so he's going to be first to go here. Combat is turn-based. We've got a variety of abilities, and they're gated based on... Well, I haven't encountered anything that's gated based on mana, or energy, or, you know, spirit, or faith, or anything like that yet. Um, but they're gated based on your position in the lineup. So you can have four members in a party at one time. At least that's all the uh, minim uh, the highest amount of members I've managed to have so far. If you're at the front, you can hit everybody, basically, because you're right next to them. Or you can hit people that are close to you, at least. If you're at the back, sometimes you can only do certain ranged attacks. Uh, and you might not be able to hit everybody. But anyway, we've got um, Open Vein here, which is available. You can see the stats associated with it. Uh, it has... Uh, ACC base, which it, admittedly I'm not totally sure what that means, but if you're more familiar with, like, pen and paper RPGs, maybe you do. Uh, damage modifier is minus 15%, and the target will bleed two points per round for three rounds. This guy has 15 HP. We're just going to go for our standard melee attack. But if we wanted to, we could also use Grape Shot Blast, which is basically just like a ranged uh, area of effect shotgun blast, kind of. Take Aim will give ourselves better accuracy and a higher crit chance, and uh, that's all we have right now. We can also move back and forth if we wanted to, but it makes sense to have the ranged guy one back. So we'll take a opportunity to shoot there, get a really nice animation. He's got the bleed effect, and now he's going to have a chance to shoot or to do his own attack. Slice and Dice did damage to both of our party members, and then we have our Crusader here. Similar thing going on with our Crusader. Uh, we've got basically a melee attack that does more damage to unholy monsters, so I guess this guy is kind of a paladin type character. Zealous Accusation is a ranged attack uh, that also gives maybe minus damage modifier to the enemy, if that's what that is. Stunning Blow has a chance to stun an enemy, and Bulwark of Faith uh, makes our torch more powerful, which I'll talk about later, and also gives us some extra protection if, you know, we could maybe get enemies to target us. That might be good to serve as the vanguard of the group, but we're just going to do a basic attack now, which should get the kill. Give them no quarter. After you finish, you uh, see what you get, by the way. There's food and there's a, a light mechanic. I'll explain all this as we move along. Now, you might be wondering, what's up with these bars here? And I'm sure the more astute amongst you are like, well, the top bar is obviously health and the bottom bar is obviously experience. Well, you're half right. The top bar is health, the bottom bar is actually stress. So this is a game where stress management plays a major role. I'll just keep us moving here for now. But it's a game where stress management uh, plays a major role. So if your stress meter gets all the way up to the top, your units will actually break and you won't be able to control them. Kind of like if you panic in XCOM or something like that. 
So you won't have control of your units anymore. Sometimes, like, their traits will come through and they'll become selfish, for example. And they'll say, oh, I'm moving to, like, the back of the party because I don't want to get killed. Or sometimes they'll become foolish and they'll, like, make themselves a target for enemies and say, like, I don't really care if I die. It's a, it's a really cool system. And what's especially cool about it is that uh, after every kind of expedition that you go out on, you have the opportunity to do stress relief. So you can send your party members to the bar or you can send them to gamble, or you can send them to the brothel, or you can send them to the abbey to pray, or to, you know, flagellate themselves, or to give confession to a priest. And this will all contribute to lowering their stress, so they're le less likely to break on future expeditions, but it does take them out of the next expedition immediately. Anyway, you also encounter things like this tent here, for example. This is uh, an interactable, or an interactive uh, element. Sometimes it'll be good, sometimes it'll be bad. You can get equipment, you can get uh, poisoned, <laughs> you can, you can un unleash a trap or something like that. But for now, we just see that the brigands have left valuables, so we'll be able to take unchecked. some extra gold. We'll be able to use that gold for various things, such as financing those expeditions to the bar and the abbey and <laughs> etc, etc. Alright, so we've surprised uh, these people here. This is like the boss battle of the tutorial. We'll do like a real expedition at the end of this, because they t typically end up only being like 10 or 15 minutes long anyway from the ones that I've had so far early in the game. Uh, and you'll be able to see a little bit more of what makes this such a unique game and kind of a multifaceted game as opposed to just standard turn-based RPG stuff. So I'm going to use Grape Shot here. We do have the ability to do, to do Pistol Shot now, which has a pretty good crit chance. Uh, but we're going to do Grape Shot, and we're going to do it at the enemy at the back. Be Actually, you know what? I'll do this to demonstrate it. We're not going to die on this mission anyway because it's easy enough. But uh, Grape Shot is pretty nice because it does do... Oh, well. As you can see, it could have damaged both enemies. Um, we're going to try to take out the Fusilier at the back. Oh, I can't hit him with that attack. What about Stunning Blow? No? Alright, we'll try to do a Stunning Blow then to stun the Brigand Bloodletter. Hopefully he's not immune to it. Good. So with him being stunned, that's going to push him to the back of the turn order and maybe make it so he can't attack. And then we'll try to do a Pistol Shot on the Fusilier at the back. Ah, which did crit. Crit actually brings down the insanity for people. So if you're going insane and then you crit an enemy, that's going to bring down the insanity for your whole party, so everyone's going to become a little bit more confident and a little bit less fearful. Let's keep trying to use Stunning Blow, honestly. If we can keep this guy for... Oh, he resisted that time. Maybe there's kind of like a refractory period where they become immune to it. So we'll just use some melee attacks here, because we should be able to take this guy out pretty easily by himself, uh, now that he's alone. He's going to do some Cat of Nine Tails style punishment that will inflict bleed on us, unless we're lucky enough to resist it. But we're just going to, you know, bash him down melee style right now. I think the game actually does a really good job of tutorializing itself early on. Uh, pistol Shot might actually be the best attack that we have here, especially with the increased crit chance, I guess. But um, it, we start out with some pretty basic, you know, RPG party members, and we get into more interesting stuff immediately after this. We'll have the opportunity to have a lot more uh, party members with some more unique effects. So you can see that the stress meter is going up a little bit for uh, our Paladin here. It should not get too bad, but that does persist uh, mission to mission, or embarkation to embarkation. So he's got 7 HP left. The next attack that we do, unless it misses, should kill. Ah! Dodging and uh, missing does happen. The stress is probably going to go up maybe a little bit. Maybe not. We do have bleed on us, but uh, I don't believe that your HP carries mission to mission. I think once you finish, it's pretty much, uh, it, it goes back to full once you get back to the town. So we've completed this mission. We got uh, some jade, which I think we can basically just sell. We got some deeds, and these are one of the resources that we can use to upgrade the stuff that we find in our town. So we'll go back here. You can see what we got. We got some heirlooms, a couple of deeds, which are the heirlooms, I should say. All of the heirlooms are used to upgrade things like the abbey, the tavern, blacksmith, etc., etc. Kind of similar to a game like Rogue Legacy, if you will. Um, quest rewards. 5,000 gold, 850 uh, collected treasure, and 2 jade here. We also got two, plus 2 resolve XP. I haven't actually ever had anybody level up, so I'm not totally sure what happens in that, but hopefully we'll be able to experience it together here as we get back to the town. Um, by the way, yeah, it's just it takes Welcome a second home. to load into exploit there. Uh, as you play, you get an activity this log, and the activity log will give you kind of a, uh, a ledger of what's happened week to week. The game takes place on a week by week basis. So we have uh, an Apprentice Highwayman who's level 1, we've unlocked the Ruins, Raynod continues to be an Apprentice Crusader level 1. I'm not sure if we have any voice over here. We don't. We also have the Help menu. Uh, I should point out, by the way, I, I don't really have anything to disclose, but the developers of Darkest Dungeon are local to Vancouver, and uh, I have met one of them 
Tyler Sigmund in person. I was in the gym and I was like changing and I had on a Twitch shirt and then this guy comes up to me and he's like, hey, are you a Twitch streamer? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, what's your name? And I was like, well, I'm Northern Lion, which is a weird thing to say in public when you're d just a normal dude. It's like, hey, here's my, here's my internet alias. And he's like, oh, cool. Like we follow each other on Twitter and it, that's who it was. So um, we, I wouldn't say we're close personal friends. I got nothing against him. But we have met in person, and maybe he's seen my junk. I can't necessarily confirm or deny that. In any case, we have a graveyard here where we can view fallen heroes, but we don't have any fallen heroes as of yet. And we have a stagecoach. The stagecoach is extremely important because this is where we can um, pull new heroes from, basically. So we just got two new heroes. We're going to drag them into our roster right now. We got a Plague Doctor. Which everyone should love because they hate the way that I pronounce plague all the time. And we got a, well if I right click on them I think I can see it. A Seeker Vestal, which is kind of like a priestess I guess, or like a, like a feminine paladin maybe? And you can see their stats and, the, and their skills. These skills get uh, unlocked based on certain impacts. Let me see. I wonder what it takes to unlock these. Probably I guess just as you level up you get them and stuff like that. That makes sense. Again, since I've never leveled up. So you can also see that like they have certain uh, characteristics with them. Plus 15% bleed resist because she's a clotter. Uh, when the light gets below 25, she has plus 2 speed. I'll talk about this lighting mechanic when we go on our next uh, mission here. Stress eaters. When her stress is above 50, she produces or she consumes twice as much food. All right. And you can also see, and this is extremely helpful for someone like me who has not played a lot of these kind of like games where party position is super important. Uh, you can see where they prefer to be in the party alignment and also where they prefer to attack, which I think is really helpful when it comes to aligning your party uh, before you go out for battle. So one of the things you can do. Oh, we haven't unlocked it yet, but we'll unlock it after the next mission. You can see that Reynaud here is like, I'm in no shape to go back out there, and he's complaining. Basically, if I can find the Abbey here, which one of these is the Abbey? Tavern? Tavern works. There's the Abbey. Uh, we can't actually click on it right now, but he is a Divine Crusader, which means he's attracted to the idea of piety and praying and stuff like that. We could have him take one mission off and spend that mission praying, and that will reduce his stress. Considering his stress is like 26 right now, it would probably reduce it to zero. Um, I had somebody gamble and it reduced them to, or they were in the brothel and it reduced their stress to zero from like 80. So, uh, or it reduced their stress by 80, I should say. So it worked out well. But anyway, we're just going to do another mission right here so you can get a little bit more of a feel for how the game works. Uh, we're going to the, the ruins here. Unholy abominations turning the light against itself. Meet them in battle and learn how they fight. It's a short mission for level one apprentices and our only goal is to complete 100% of the battles. We get 3,000 gold, two busts, and a crest. Actually, we should go back here and just very quickly upgrade the stagecoach, which I forgot about. So we can use our uh, our deeds and our crests to upgrade town buildings here. We, we must have started with a decent supply. So we're going to upgrade our stagecoach network, which increases the number of available heroes after each week to three instead of two three like we just had. And uh, we can upgrade our barracks as well and rain. to make it so we can actually hold 11 instead of 10 party members at any given time. We can only send four out on any given mission, but this will allow us to keep more in reserve, which is useful because we're going to have some that will be in our party, but they won't be available for a mission because we'll be having them do stress relief, basically. So we're going to embark here, and um, you can see our rewards here. We get some crests, we get some busts, we get some gold, and we're going to put people in the, the party alignment here. So I believe, yeah, our apprentice crusader prefers to be at the front. And our Highwayman prefers to be in one of the two middle positions. Uh, let me see here. Our Plague Doctor prefers to be in the third position. So we'll put him there. Uh, our Healer... Mm, you know what? We're going to move our Plague Doctor to the final position. Because he's the only one that has any kind of preference for the fourth slot. And we're going to put our Seeker Vestal here and uh, our Highwayman here. You can also rename them, by the way. So let's let's rename them here. I want to be the Apprentice Crusader. So we'll be Northern Lion. Boom. Oh, wait. Okay, we got to actually click the button after we do it. All right. This adds... Anytime... It's, it's the easiest shortcut for adding some more emerging gameplay is just let you rename people. So we'll be Northern Lion. Uh, our Highwayman here. Obviously, this has to be Mathis. I bet he's doing exactly the same thing in his game as well. Um, not to not to slight anybody, but I'll give uh, my co-host Rockley Smile uh, precedence as the Plague Doctor here. And of course, 
You know, I hate to conform to traditional gender roles, but as the only female, I think we've got to say my wife Kate gets to be the Seeker Vestal. Plus, she carries a big stick. I don't know what I meant by that. I immediately regret that sentence. Anyway, we got everybody here. Let's provide for them. So, there is an inventory system that was not really uh, talked about in the tutorial because you didn't need to talk about it. But we're going to buy up some provisions. They say eight torches and four food. I'm going to take eight torches and four food. Torches are necessary because there is like a lighting system. If your light gets down to zero, your stress goes up faster. Or if your light gets lower, your stress goes up faster. Food you use to heal yourself. And also there will be like random events that you encounter in the dungeon. Which will say like consume food or have stress go way up. You can also get a shovel uh, used to clear obstacles. Anti-venom will basically cure blight. But we don't need that because we have the plague doctor with us. Bandages can stop bleed. Medicinal herbs, I've never actually had to use them. Skeleton keys can unlock things that we can't just unlock by ourselves. Holy water. Uh, purge evil and restore purity, I'm not totally sure what that does. And more torches just to increase the light level. In fact, I'm going to take a couple extras. Oh, we can't stack them that high. I'm going to take a couple extras just to be sure. Because I would hate for something terrible to happen. And then we're going to embark here. And we'll, um, we'll have a black screen and exploit for some reason. Because it has a little bit of trouble... Looking at it, but then there we go. It comes back. The fiends must be driven back. All right. And what better place so again, we start with our map like this, and our goal is to complete a hundred percent of our uh, encounters. So let's move to this room, and we'll try to go through in what I think is a, a logical order. We'll see what we got here. This crate contains stashed heirlooms. We got four crests. We can use those to uh, upgrade our town. Now we might encounter some traps as we lock as we walk along here. Oh, instead we just encountered some enemies. So let's take a look at these guys. We've got maggots. They have a lot of resistance. Oh, we can also see our chance to hit and crit them. I didn't know that just by mousing over them. That's cool. Um, these guys don't have as much resistance. They have 7 HP. I, I tend to prefer focusing down the ranged units as fast as possible because they're... Um, they usually do a lot of damage and they're a little bit, not tankier, but harder to hit because they're further back. So if we did a pistol shot, we can hit this enemy. What's our chance to hit? We'll do 3 to 8 damage with a 15% chance to crit, 67% chance to hit. What about a Grape Shot Blast? 63% chance to hit, no chance to crit, and the damage will be 2 to 5. But it'll be 2 to 5 to all enemies. I kind of like the idea of a pistol shot to focus down the spitter at the back. We did 4 damage, which is not going to kill it, but it does some damage. Now, a lot of the enemies in the game have the uh, ability to put status effects on you. We got lucky and dodged both of those. This one would probably be Blight if it landed, yeah, so that'll be Poison, and she'll lose a little bit of, of HP every turn. So, we're gonna just do a basic Smite with Northern Lion here. That crit for 26, and you can see that that will give uh, less stress to these people. Like, when, the, when it glows in kind of like a positive way above your head, that means stress is going down. When it looks like it's a negative way, it's going up. That's the best way I know to describe it, honestly. Um, okay, so this is uh, Kate, she's our priestess or vessel here. She has the ability to do judgment, which is a ranged attack that heals herself. Divine comfort heals the party for one to two. Illumination is a ranged attack. What, what would the damage be on illumination if we click on that here? 80% for two to five. 7% chance to crit. 67% chance for two to five. I like that because it could it has a pretty decent chance to actually kill this. Uh, there's also the Hand of Light ability, uh, which we don't have the option to do right now. I'm not sure why. Maybe because there's no enemies far enough away for us to do it, or maybe because there's no unholy monsters? That nah, doesn't seem like it would make sense. Let's try this, though. Yeah, okay, there was a one-third chance of that happening. And here's Nick with the ability to only do one attack, but he'll throw it here. 67% chance to do two to four. So there's like a two-thirds times two-thirds chance, I don't know, like a 40% chance of a kill. Alright, well, it would be nice if you at least hit so the status effect maybe could have killed the spitter, but that's okay, Nick. You know, it's your first day on the job here. Alright, Kate's gonna go again, we're gonna do exactly the same thing, and she's gonna get the KO there. And that's gonna lower her sanity, I guess, because that was a crit. And we have an 80% chance to get the kill with me, because I know what I'm doing, and everyone is dead, and everyone's happier now, because I, uh made them less stressed out. You're welcome. That's the kind of dynamic that I like to build to or bring to a group. So we walk through the hallway, we get to our room and, you know, sometimes there's encounters that happen here. There's a really cool class that we have not unlocked yet. Eldritch Eldritch push is annoying because it can actually change the orientation of your party members, which obviously you don't want because they're all in kind of the order that you want. But anyway, um 
There's a really cool class called Bounty Hunter, which actually allows you to hook an enemy, like from the back for example, because this, this enemy right here is the one that I'd probably want to attack the most. You can hook them from the back and pull them up two spaces to make them easier for other party members to hit, which is awesome. If they have a party member they want to protect, you can pull them forward and then, you know, basically gang up on them or focus them. So I'm going to use Grape Shot here because it'll do uh, 2 to 5 damage to every single one of these enemies. So we did 3 2, two. That's, that's decent damage output, I think. Rend for the old gods is really annoying. I think it brings up... Oh, it, it bleeds. Okay, I thought it brought up stress. Alright. Party heal, I still don't think is totally necessary. Judgment. Does it... It doesn't attack and heals yourself for three? If so, that's pretty good. Three to seven. Three to seven. Three to seven. Let's try to do three to seven here. There's like a 40% chance total that uh, this bone rabble dies. I only did three, but she does heal herself for three. Okay, that's actually a good attack that I didn't notice. Nick has more opportunities now. Noxious Blast is the one that we used. Plague Grenade. Ranged. Blights two points around for three rounds. Blinding Gas. Oh, it stuns for 100%. That's pretty good. Incision is basically the dagger attack that it would use if, it, uh, if, if Nick was closer to the front here. Let's try a Plague Grenade. And it'll hit both of these enemies, I guess. 63% chance to hit. Damage will be 1 to 1. That seems really bad. But it does blight. Maybe we'd be better off doing like blinding gas or something like that. 67, 1 to 1, and it'll stun them. Or we could use Noxious Blast. If it hits, it's guaranteed to kill, and it's guaranteed that, well, it's 80% to hit. Yeah, Alright. Let's give Nick a kill. Give them no quarter. The voice acting adds like a nice level of, uh,. Immersion into the game as well, and the, the dude has like a total like Tom Waits, his life is going off the rails type thing going on. So our damage is 6 to 13, that's not that good. Maybe we'd be better off doing a stunning blow. That enemy won't be able to attack this turn, and then we can focus down the other ones, hopefully. Alright. I mean, I am taking a little bit of damage here, and the bleed is going to be real. But, we'll do uh... I think we'll do Judgment again. What's the attack? Like, okay, so it does 3 to 7. What if I was to use Illumination? 2 to 5. Yeah, I think it makes more sense to use uh, our Judgment ability to keep our vessel, Kate, here at uh, full HP. Stressful Incantation will bring up my stress by 15, which is actually like a not insignificant amount. We're going to Grape Shot. Mm, yeah, they still have a decent amount of HP, unless the pistol shot, let's, oh, we can't even shoot there, okay. We're going to Grape Shot uh, at the back here to spread out our damage as much as possible with Mathis. Honestly, that 442 is pretty good. And then we should be able to smite pretty much any enemy we want to. Let's smite the one with the, the higher level of HP. I, I didn't use Smite, I used Stunning Blast because I'm an idiot. Uh, what about, what are you at? Two, three, the Plague Grenade? Oh, we can't land it properly. All right, let's just Noxious Blast the one that we're guaranteed to kill if we hit. Nice. Nick picking up all the last hits here. It's like the exact opposite of when we played Dota together. All right, so we're going to... This guy's stunned, but I'm still going to Grape Shot. And then as long as we get to attack, we should be able to kill, like, all the enemies this time. Nick's going to pick up another kill because he's a badass dude who doesn't care about anything. And then I should be able to get the Smite kill to finish this off. And that crit will bring down the stress of everybody. Well, except for Mathis, who has no stress right now, because he flies through life in a carefree kind of days. Beautiful. So that went really well. Uh, an ornate sarcophagus, it's locked. Let's open it. It's trapped, so that'll hurt. And yeah, that inflicted bleed on myself. I could eat some food to raise my own health, but I don't think it's going to be necessary. Okay, select the destination room. We'll choose this one right here. I don't know why I got the scouting ability there. But I appreciate it. So there's going to be treasure in this room down here. Um, let's move to this room for now. And I am a little weak, but that's okay. The bleed is hurting. You can also see that our light meter is going down. What I can do is switch to my inventory screen here and then use a torch. And then that will bring it up one full bar. Which will help out from a sanity standpoint. Or a stress standpoint. I'm going to use them interchangeably, stress and uh, sanity, even though that's not fair. Okay, Nick goes first. Let's try out our Plague Grenade. It landed, and that'll do a pretty decent amount of Blight damage over the next two turns. For Kate, I'm actually going to have her do um, Divine Comfort for a party heal. It only did one healing, which is not that amazing, but it's the thought that counts, honey. Wow. 
Mathis managed to miss a point blank shot. I'm not a huge fan of that. Um, but we'll try smiting here because there's a decent chance that, like, because my attack stat is so strong, or my damage stat is so strong, there's a decent chance. Is this, does it do? Oh, it does extra damage against unholy monsters as well, which is why this helps. There's a decent chance that we'll just kill one. Ah, we did the lowest amount of damage we could possibly do, which means that guy is going to get a chance to attack. Luckily, we dodged because my HP is getting a little low. And uh, luckily, Math has dodged as well. Graveyard Slash. They did the Slash. They did the Graveyard Slash. Alright, Kate's gonna use Party Heal again. Still only one. It's kind of a bad roll. Could have been two. Graveyard Slash on her again. Yeah, she's getting beat up here. She's gonna have to heal herself. At least Math has actually managed to land a shot there. He got an easy kill. Nick might be able to finish this guy off. Oh, the dodges are real. At least the enemy AI honestly does seem to be pretty lenient. Nice in who it targets. Um, if it if they all focused on one, they'd probably do a lot better. So I'm glad they don't all focus on one. I'm not saying the AI is stupid, by the way. This if it is, it doesn't make the game that much easier. I've still lost a lot of party members. Uh, we should have in my earlier game. We should have brought uh, a shovel here because if we had brought a shovel, um, we would have been able to clear this faster. It's kind of like this war of mine, but uh, instead we took a long time to deal with it, and it actually required us to lose some HP as well. But anyway, we're gonna use another torch quickly. Keep our uh, Light meter as high as it can possibly be, and we're done with this section right here. We might have an encounter in this room. We don't. Okay, so we're going to go down to this treasure room now. And we're going to have an encounter along the way. We can see it because we scouted it. So let's move along. You know what? There's no reason not to use another torch, really. There we go. Keep the meter as high as it'll go. Okay, so we've got another combat encounter. Oh, this guy's got a high speed stat, so he gets to go first. But luckily, Nick, with a high agility stat, gets to dodge. I love throwing out Grape Shot first, just for like some spread out damage. Unfortunately, Mathis needs to get his eyes checked. Kate's gonna use a party heal, because everybody's been hurt a little bit. The one heals are killing me here. Alright. Nick is gonna throw in some blinding gas to hopefully blind this guy. Alright, so he's gonna be stunned for a turn, which is perfect. Now we just have to not die. And that's not looking so great. We could try to do, like, a double stun here. Like, stun this guy. And that way we only have to deal with one enemy. I suppose I probably should have stunned the enemy that didn't attack, but I, I had a feeling he might be resistant to it. Uh, 38% versus 0%. Mm, maybe that was the right decision. So we grape shot it again. This one actually kind of worked. Kate's gonna do a party heal. Still only for one. I think it can work for two, but now that we've had so many bad rerolls in a row, I'm not sure. Alright, Nick's gonna blinding gas the guy at the back again. Hopefully he's not resistant. Good. I'm gonna use stunning blow on the one in the middle, and that's actually gonna get the kill. So I should have probably stunned the other dude, even though he's only got or he's got 38% resistance to it. We're doing a pretty good job with our crowd control right now, though, I think. Nick can no longer use blinding gas because there's nobody far enough away. So he'll use Noxious Blast, and we'll try to get the Arbalist killed, just so there's only one enemy on the screen. It's some Blight damage, that'll help. Uh, <laughs> I hate to do it. Kate's gonna party heal again. Hey, there we go, we finally got the higher roll out of that. And then I am going to use Stunning Blow on the... Uh, you know, instead of using Stunning Blow, I think it's better off to just smite the big enemy. Yeah, and get enough damage done that they could be killed next turn. Or we could have just killed the one that was back. Oh, that's not a good crit for me. All right, Mathis is too close, unfortunately, to actually... Uh... Well, we might as well go for this one, then. Yeah. Oh, it's perfect! I apologize for all the snide comments that he made. You see, we got hit hard enough last time that it actually cost me my turn and pushed me back one space. All right, Mathis straight up MVP of this mission right here. He just got two crits in a row, and we also just got a Bounty Hunter uh, item, which honestly I've never seen that before. I'm not sure why we got that. I don't think it's random. Like, everything seems kind of seated so far, but that is going to be like a nice trinket or something that helps us out here. With our Bounty Hunter class, which we don't have yet. Uh, I would like to, you know, put my Crusader back at the top here, even though it does appear that I'm 
kind of at risk of dying. Should we open this sarcophagus? Let's open it. The maiden swings shut on its own. Which made Mathis claustrophobic. I wonder how that will impact us in the future. Alright, so we're in another area here and we're going to have to deal with some more combat. I am admittedly getting a little bit nervous about my own chances of survival here. Okay, so Mathis is going to grape shot. Two damage each. It's about what we'd expect on average, probably. He takes a little damage, which should inflict bleed. The status effects are punishing, man. Kate's going to take an absurd amount of damage. And I'm going to get graveyard slashed, which might put me on my deathbed. Oh, uh, it's close. Mathis, if he gets hit here, is going to get more stressed out. Okay. Um, honestly, I think Kate has to do damage and heal herself. Does three to seven, so we can't kill anybody. I think we should do it on the Arbalist at the back. Did three damage, healed herself. Save yourself, sweetheart. I'm not in a good place right now. We're going to try to blind um, the one at the back again. Oh, they both dodged it. That hurts. What do I do? I can't heal myself, I think. Like, I can't eat food right now to heal myself. So we're going to have to smite. And we're just going to pray for a good smite. Eight HP. We could... We could conceivably kill the bone soldier which is a great name good at least I accomplished something before what appears to be an inevitable death all right Kate is gonna judge and heal herself like we only have one HP anyway party heal is pretty unlikely to save us even if we got the maximum roll with it so let's um let's just keep her in the clear here and she's gonna try to hit the one at the back it doesn't heal her if she misses apparently all right blind the arbalist thank you Nick I appreciate it now, let's see if I get killed. Oh, Mathis still has a turn. What if you pistol shot the one at the back? Well, you're not going to kill anybody like that, are you? We'll grape shot again. 335 is actually some incredible damage. All right, this could kill me. Or at least put me on death's door. Okay, so what death's door means, I think they'll give us a tutorial right now. Uh, when a hero is reduced to zero HP, they're at death's door. While in this state, they will suffer, suffer stat penalties, plus any further damage has a chance to kill them. Heal them to get them off of death's door, which is what we should really do with a party heal next turn. But for now, uh, so it doesn't kill them instantly when they get down to zero HP. They kind of have like a Borderlands style second win. Let's use Smite here. 67% chance to hit for four to nine. We got really lucky that that even hit. I'm not salty about the fact that it didn't get a kill. Uh, come on. Oh, okay. At least they didn't target me personally here. Man, this can grape shot again. Actually, what about a pistol shot? I think grape shot's still better here. Wow! That is unfortunate. Nick should just be able to go for a straight kill here. Nice. And then Kate. No! <laughs> we got lucky that we didn't get targeted, but I need Kate to go so she can party heal us. Um, our damage is so bad, but I gotta try for the hit anyway. We'll try here. Oh, again, it's like so close to fatal damage, but not quite there. No, yeah. Oh, death's door. I stayed alive, just basically due to random chance. Okay, party heal will take us off of death's door, which is important because it gives us another chance at death's door if we get hit again. All right, grape shot the shit out of these guys, Mattis. At least you got one. That's something. So we'll probably be back on death's door. Oh no, we have one HP, luckily. And then Kate can just use judgment, and we'll definitely get the kill on this turn, assuming Nick lands it, which he did. So we win, uh, a little scary, but we got uh, we got some good equipment there, and we completed the quest. But first we're gonna open up this thing, and we'll see what we get. The contents are yours. Two deeds, two crests, we'll take them all. So we, we could explore more of the dungeon if we wanted to, but considering how close, maybe we have a scout, and that's why we can see where we're going. You can see there's some cool stuff still available, like what's this spider web, for example. Oh, it's probably a... No, I have no idea what it is, actually, now that I think about it. But um, we're going to complete the quest just because that was stressful More enough to be to dangerous in the first place. Devils and we're pretty to lucky to even be alive right now. And again, you'll get kind of like a weird screen here for a second. There you go. We're back. So we unlocked now the tavern, the abbey, and that's it. But still, um, I'll quickly go over the tutorial for those, but we won't do anything with them just yet. Abby is a uh, stress relief for pious individuals. So if I put myself, who is a pious individual, I think God fearing, yeah, uh, is is what indicates that. In town, we'll only pray for stress relief. So pretty much, we just have to put 
This guy in uh, the transept to pray to a higher power, and uh, that'll lower his stress. Which we might want to do because we're in kind of a tough spot with respect to his amount of stress. My amount of stress, I should say. Um, and there, there's different ways that you can do this. Like so, Most people will be open to all kinds of stress relief, but keep in mind that it does take a turn off for them. Known cheat is not allowed to gamble. Way to go, Mathis. Claustrophobia, he can't get in enclosed spaces, and witness. After seeing troubling behavior, will not take part in the prayer activity in town. Okay. Uh, the Abbey and the, the Tavern are basically the same, just for different kinds of people. Uh, right now, the caretaker, who is our narrator, is, is the occupying the gambling hall, unfortunately. Alike. But we can also drink our cares away, or we can go to the brothel and partake in some carnal pleasures. Let's upgrade our bar to increase Strong the stress drink, recovery, and we'll upgrade chance, our brothel to increase stress recovery. And can we upgrade anything on the Abbey to increase stress recovery? Like, maybe the transepts? Yeah. And we still have enough uh, cloisters here, or sorry, enough uh, busts and crests to do one more each Gilded there. Alright. Well, I think that's going to do it for this episode. For some, Thanks for watching. Uh, this has been kind of a, head. you know, a, an episode with a lot of tutorialization and stuff like that. But hopefully you can see why I'm having such a good time with Darkest Dungeon so far. If you enjoyed the episode, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.